Michelle Smith and welcome to my channel. In today's crafting adventure, I have a kitchen decor item for you. It is an eat sign DIY. Here is a list of the tools and materials I use to complete the project. For your convenience, I've also included a detailed list in the description box below. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so you're going to need one of these canvas panels. I picked this up at Walmart. It was $4.97, and this is a 10 inch by 10 inch by 0.75 of an inch. Okay, this is what the front looks like. This is what the back looks like, and it's all wood. Go ahead and remove any stickers. And then you're going to need some white acrylic paint. I'm using Apple Barrel, which I also picked up from Walmart. But any white acrylic paint will do. This is flat. Okay, so you wanna get a good coat of the white paint all over the base. And you wanna make sure that you get the sides as well. Wood tends to soak up the paint, so you need to put a good amount on there when you're putting on your first coat and get that paint moved around quickly because it will absorb right into the wood. to finish painting this I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to put a second coat on. I have my two coats of white paint on my wood canvas and I'm letting that dry so I'm going to move on to the next step. You're also going to need a plaque. I picked this up from the Dollar Tree. It can be any size that you want. It just needs to be big enough to fit this eat sign that I picked up at Walmart. And this was, let's see, $2.47. They also had one, this is galvanized, they also had one in wood. So you can use either one, whichever one you prefer. But this will fit onto this plaque and that's what I'm looking for. And then uh, from the Dollar Tree, you're also going to need one of their bamboo spoons and one of their bamboo forks. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the plaque and the wooden spoon and the wooden fork. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make these darker. We're going to use the antique Waverly wax and I picked this up from Walmart and I'm going to thin this down a little bit with some water and then I'm going to use that as a stain to stain these three pieces. Okay, so I put some in of the antique wax and now I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of water and thin it down a little bit. And you need to mix it really well until it's fully combined before you use it. Still a little thick for me, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And 
Okay, now it's nice and loose, but it still has some consistency to it. allows you to still see the wood grain. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing around the edges and to the spoon and fork, and then I'll be back. So my pieces are all dry. Now when I did the uh, bamboo fork and spoon, it the material is so smooth that uh, I just painted on the watered down antique wax and I didn't wipe it off because if I wiped it off, it completely took it off. So um, I just used the paintbrush until I got a nice even coat and then I let it dry. That worked out. And then on this, I laid it down and wiped it off any excess. And I did make sure to get the edges. Now, my wood canvas is all nice and dry. I did put two coats on that. I am going to use my sanding block here and I am going to slightly distress it with my sanding block. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna use some of the Waverly Antique Wax and we're gonna distress it a little bit more. But I just kinda wanna remove any kind of shine that is on from the paint. I wanna give a little wear around the edges. I just want to age it up just a little bit with some sandpaper. So just go ahead and do that to however you want it for yours. I just don't want it to have that kind of shiny brand spanking new look to it. So then you just want to take a little bit of the antique wax. You don't need a lot. Just put a little dollop down. You do not want to use any water and you want to use a dry brush. I like to use these little round pouncing brushes. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. Just put a little bit of the antique wax out on the corner. And I like to start on the edges and just kind of dab back and forth as you go around, hit the corners. This is basically getting the majority of the paint off. Then once you've gone around, go back and just kind of drag your brush through. They make it a little aged. Make sure to hit the edges. 
just go through and drag, go through the top there. I'm wanting to get the majority of the paint off here on the side. Then once you have that, kind of go around your edges and kind of drag. Now I kind of want to make sure everything's going in the same direction, so I'm going to kind of drag back and forth. But just work on it until you get it the way that you like it for the background. If you get too much in one area or you don't like it, you can just take your sandpaper, go over it, remove what you don't like, and do it again. So don't be, you know, too hard on yourself. Just go with it. And start with less, and you can always add more. Now this is just going to be the background. Now, see, I didn't like all those little short ones, so just go back, use the sandpaper, kind of remove it, and do it again. Okay, so go ahead and antique your background until you are happy with it. Next, we're going to go ahead and put the eat onto the wood flap. Now, this eat does come as sticky, but I'm not sure how well that's going to hold. So I'm also going to use some of the wood glue and some hot glue. Now whenever I place letters or anything like this, I always start with the center letter. It just helps with placement if you start in the middle and then work your way out. I'm just going to put a little bit of the wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree. This is the Crafter Square wood glue. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to let this dry completely and then I'll go in and clean up the letters. So we have all our pieces now so we're going to go ahead and put this baby together and I'm going to be placing it right here. So we're all done. 
I have attached everything using the wood glue and hot glue. Now you're going to want to leave this laying flat for a good 12 hours. If you tried to hang this on the wall right now, these things would fall off. Hot glue does not stick real well to uh, freshly painted surfaces. So the best thing to do is to wait until the wood glue fully dries. And then you'll have a nice bond and you won't have to worry about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's craft. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. I hope you and your family are all staying happy, healthy, and strong. You have a great day, and I will catch you next time.